Actually pretty glad we came this way instead of the uh, north to south route. That was one hell of a descent. Good decision living in Florida. <laughs> it had been two and a half days since we started hiking the Appalachian Trail and we had begun our descent down Blood Mountain. Unlike the rest of the journey, this trail turned out to be pretty crowded with tourists parking at the base of the mountain and hiking up its north face. Unlike the south face, the north face was very rocky and those rocks were covered in a thin layer of leaves making the descent slippery and treacherous. That made Sean and I even happier when we finally arrived at Mountain Crossings, beacon of civilization in the woods. Welcome to Scientific Drinking where Sean and I conclude our five day trip along the Appalachian Trail. Cheers. Got condensation on the camera lens, so it looks like we're gonna be using the phone for a while. After an especially long 1.9 miles, Sean and I finally reached Neil Gap. Neil Gap is well known for the store that's located there called Mountain Crossings, and it's through this archway that all hikers, at least all through hikers, must pass as they tackle the Appalachian Trail. While we were there, we could hear the sound of souped up hot rods and motorcycles tearing up the mountain pass nearby. For anyone with a nice car, the mountain road was enviable, and the views were fantastic. It was here that Sean and I were able to get a shower, have a rest, resupply, and prepare for the next leg of our journey. So we showered up, we did our laundry, and uh, just in time for it not to rain tomorrow, at least that's what the forecast says. So it's already almost four, I'm trying to knock out another four miles. That'll give us the next two days to do 15 miles because we decided we're gonna end it at the uh, 54 mile mark instead of the plan 78, which I think is wise. The problem was that between Unicoi Gap and Dix Gap was a stretch of about 22 miles where there was no clear pickup point, no gap with a parking lot or any easy access where we could hop off the trail or decide to quit if it was too much. So we had to make the choice, either Unicoi Gap or Dix Gap. All right, more trail facts with Matt and Sean. Uh, more trail facts with Matt, the oldest person to ever complete the Appalachian Trail, a guy named Dale with the trail name Whitebeard. Trail names are pretty common here. In fact, we've had multiple hikers introduce themselves by their trail names, not their actual names. Well, Dale was 84 years old. And I'll tell you what, doing this trail when I'm 32, coming on 33, makes me feel a lot older than I am. I can't imagine doing it 84. Well, I'll tell you what, follow up with me in 50 years, and I'll give the thing a go. Greybeard joins a distinguished list of senior through hikers, including Emma Gatewood, who is perhaps the most well-known. She was the first woman to hike the entire Appalachian Trail by herself and in one season. At the time, she was 67 years old, had 11 children, and was even a great-grandmother. As though this feat wasn't enough by itself, Emma's hike was legendary for another reason. It brought attention to the trail that had been struggling for many decades. All right. That was the last uphill of the day. I think I think it was the easiest uphill we've ever done. Isn't that right, Sean? We talked to first camera on. <laughs> so we've reached mile 35.5 on day three. I conquered the hardest mountain on the trail, at least in this section of the trail. <laughs> yeah, this section. All right, so tomorrow, actually over the next two days, we Plan to make to Unicoi Gap, which is about 16, 17 miles away. So two days to do 17 miles is pretty easy. I think, honestly, if we really bust our ass, we could do 17 miles in one day. We really need to. If we really we need to. to. Yeah, but we don't need to do that. And we're not going to. So we're going to leisurely take some really good drone shots. Coffee. Make some coffee. And enjoy, enjoy ourselves. Life on the trail. Yeah. All right. Night. Well, this morning it looks like the tables have turned. We have ourselves a level one Sean leading the way and a level two man. What's the goal today, Sean? 15 miles or so? So, there's about 
seven miles to the first shelter. The next shelter is 15 miles. Terrain looks pretty even, but we'll see how we go. Earlier, I made it sound like the trail was built in three years and that was the end of it. But in reality, it suffered for many decades after its initial construction, not only to gain enough visitors and to be established, but it kind of faded into obscurity. And it was a long time before it developed enough of a reputation and had enough visitors to be self-sustaining. It would be difficult to overstate how close the Appalachian Trail was to fading into obscurity and being paved over by parking lots, Kmarts, and superhighways. We just ran across our first through hiker. We gave him an Artemis pin. Uh, he was deaf. I'm not sure if he understood that we worked for NASA, but he seemed happy with the, the good job sign, so he's almost there. What was the sign you gave him? Good job. I signs. I had to look it up. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Many sections had fallen into neglect or were reclaimed by nature by the time Emma Grandma Gatewoods made her first trek through the Appalachian Trail, the first of many. <sighs> back up to a level one, Matt. I think we're back down to a level two, Sean. Spurred on by <laughs> the celebrity of Grandma Gatewood and others who hiked the entire Appalachian Trail, the United States Secretary of the Interior, Stuart Udall, pioneered the National Trails System Act, which was passed in 1968. Among other things, it established the Appalachian Trail as a kind of U.S. heritage site, securing its future much to the benefit of many hikers such as myself. The result is a trail with astonishing scenery that seems to call for you long after you've finished your hike. Even now, several weeks after returning, I find myself wanting to return and hike another section regardless of how challenging it was and how much it made my knees hurt. just got some really sweet drone footage that I'm sure you've just saw if I edited this thing correctly. So now it's time for some sweet trail facts. The Appalachian Trail was hesitant to hire their first full-time staffer, uh, mostly because they were a volunteer organization. In fact, like I mentioned before, the entire trail was built by volunteers in the course of three years. So when they finally hired their first staffer in 1968, it was kind of a big deal. The entire trail is still managed almost entirely by volunteers and by donations. Uh, and pretty much managed by two authorities, the uh, Appalachian Trail Conservatory and the U.S. Forest Service. Now, you might think the U.S. Forest Service is a conservation organization, and in some ways it certainly is. The U.S. reached its lowest level of, of uh, forest coverage in 1920, with a total coverage of about 2.9 million square kilometers. Since then, it's risen back up to uh, its peak level in 1968. Dipped it down a little bit again, and now it's rising back up again, so we're about 3. About 3 million square kilometers of forest coverage. But the primary goal of the Forest Service is not actually to do conservation efforts, but to facilitate the use of natural resources such as oil, gas, and trees, ore, and, uh, and metals. Another fun fact about the U.S. Forest Service is that Forest Service has built more roads than any other organization in the United States. They've built a total of 380,000 miles of roads. That's enough to get you to the moon and halfway back. Now, simply throwing around numbers about the amount of forest coverage in the United States really doesn't do the topic justice. Like most data sets, there's a lot of nuance contained within the numbers, and this is no exception. The health of a forest can't be measured in its size alone, but in its composition, in the amount of biodiversity in that forest. And this is where we run into a little bit of a problem. You may have seen some plots or maps showing the amount of virgin forest in the United States and how it's plummeted over the past 100 years. This isn't due to logging, or at least not just due to logging, but due to the introduction of parasites unintentionally brought over through trade from overseas. One example of this is the American chestnut, and you would be forgiven if you're not too familiar with the tree. At one time, it was one of the most ubiquitous trees in the Appalachians. In fact, it made up about 25% of all trees, and it was huge. In fact, it was one of the most beautiful and noble trees in the Appalachian Mountains. But because of the introduction of a fungus known as Endothia parasitica, it was almost completely wiped out. Now, there are still a few American chestnuts left standing, and they're being bred to be more resistant to this uh, parasite. However, it is nowhere near as ubiquitous as it once was. In fact, it's almost completely gone, with nearly a 100% mortality rate. 
when infected with Endothia parasitica. Another example is conifers, such as pine trees and spruce trees. They're being ravaged by the southern pine beetle, which was introduced from overseas as well, and 90% of hemlocks are infested by the woolly adelgid, which is another kind of parasite that eats away at the leaves and causes tremendous mortality rates. Could have stepped on this guy. Glad I didn't. Sean's got a good eye. He stands out. Yeah, you know, like a leaf bug or something. Mr. Camouflage calling, buddy. Yeah. Off you go. Be free! Stay off the trail, man. <laughs> At one time, even the American dogwood tree was threatened by a fungus that wiped out a tremendous amount of those trees, but it's less of a problem in recent years as they built up a resistance, and human intervention and preservation efforts have been successful. After hiking the first seven miles of the day, we reached Low Gap Shelter, which was about the halfway point for our trip, and it was still well before noon. The shelter was sturdy and well-built, and clearly one of the newer structures on the trail. It also had access to a privy and a fresh source of water only a few feet away. Soon we were joined by two groups of people, two gentlemen who were doing a section hike like us, and another two gentlemen that were completing a through hike, walking all the way from Maine to join us for lunch here at the shelter. After refilling our water, getting some lunch, and exchanging pleasantries with our fellow hikers, we set off for the final leg of our trip for the day, another seven and a half miles or so to Blue Mountain Shelter. The next five miles were some of the easiest and most enjoyable on the trip so far, with great views, an abundance of running water, and smooth level trail, with very few surprises. The amount of biodiversity in the Appalachian Mountains isn't the same as it once was, especially in terms of trees. However, there's still good news. Due to the efforts of conservation groups like the Appalachian Trail Conservancy and others, many fauna have returned to the Appalachian Mountains. Deer and other animals that were hunted to near extinction within the Appalachian Mountains have found a new home in national parks and forests that are conserved and protected from hunting. Yes, Sean. Go. Lick the teat of Mother Nature. Lap at its utters. Oh, it's mossy. Yes. 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 <laughs> Even after four days of hiking, there were still moments where the Appalachian Trail took our breath away, and we had to stop and enjoy the view. And sometimes that view wasn't always a panoramic shot over an open valley. Sometimes it was like this. As I mentioned earlier, the popularity of the Appalachian Trail has grown significantly over time, thanks in part to the efforts of Grandma Gatewood and other conservationists. In the 1960s, there was only 37 thru-hikers, Grandma Gatewood among them. That grew to almost 1,500 in the 1980s, and then to almost 6,000 in the 2000s. In the 2010s, it's expected over 9,000 people to complete a complete through hike in the Appalachian Trail, both north to south and south to north. And of course, those numbers are only people who have completed a through hike, the success rate of which is only about 25%. It doesn't include people who have attempted the through hike or only done section hikes like Sean and I have, or even day hikers that hike only a section of the trail, like up to Blood Mountain and back, like we saw earlier in this video. Even so, the Appalachian Trail isn't so much suffering from success as thriving because of it. It was astonishing to see how well the conservation efforts have been successful in the Appalachian Trail, despite challenges with parasites like we mentioned earlier. It may have been that we were really tired after a long day of hiking, but it certainly seemed like after the first five miles after Low Gap Shelter that were pleasant, the last two miles were agonizingly technical and challenging with steep climbs, slippery rocks, and an uneven path. Blue Mountain Shelter. Never have I worked so much for something so small. So when we finally reached Blue Mountain Shelter at the very top, you can imagine how relieved we were. We did 14.5 miles today. I've done a lot of shit in my life. A lot of difficult shit. That's definitely, that's up there. That's really... Ah, 
All right. So tomorrow we only got about two miles, less than that. All I have to do is make it down the hill, get a ride, hopefully check into the hotel, or at least um, hold our bags, and then we can get some beer. In the meantime, we are going to enjoy ourselves. I have 4G cell service up here, so I'm gonna put on some music. On enjoy what's left of our kitchen. Yeah, and all of the uh, food we have left and haven't eaten. Actually, mostly the fancy stuff from Sean, and uh, <laughs> not the fuel I have left over because that could last another week, at least. Matt's mom. Nita, when you see this, this jerky is amazing. It's amazing. Thank you so much. It's the uh, sweet and spicy one. Yeah. What was the other one we had? Korean. Oh, Korean. Korean. Yeah, the Korean, Korean one. That one is also amazing. Cheers. I have high hopes that the Appalachian Trail and continuing efforts of conservation and a mindfulness about climate change will contribute to the preservation of the Appalachian Trail and the national parks and forests that line its length. After what was probably the longest and most challenging day of the trip, we look forward to that beer in our near future. The next morning we enjoyed the sunrise, made a cup of coffee, and had a leisurely breakfast while socializing with our fellow hikers. It was only about 1.9 miles to Utakoi Gap, and we were in no hurry, especially since we didn't really want to turn into day drinkers and have a beer before noon. Or more specifically, the brewery didn't open until 11 anyway. Sean getting his pull up in. Yeah, we got a level one Sean today. With the pack. With the pack, level 0.5. Fueled by the thought of beer, Sean strives for greatness. Yay. Appalachian Trail. Yeah, okay. The cashier at Mountain Crossings was a through hiker himself, who had performed several hikes both north to south and south to north. He mentioned how much he wanted to return to the trail, even after hiking several thousand miles. At the time, I thought it a little strange, you know, I had just stopped in to get a shower and move on and finish this leg of the trail, but now, having stepped away for a certain period of time, I think about returning all the time. And I finally understand, even though I haven't done anything close to a through hike myself. Even so, I was kind of glad that our hike was only 55 miles or 88 kilometers, at least for this first trip. Maybe next time, it'll be longer. Hey, hey. I'm walking man southbound on the Appalachian Trail. There you go. At the end of our 1.9 mile morning hike, we were energized. Not just because we were finishing our trip and headed off to a nice cold beer and a warm meal, but because the trail had built up our endurance. 55 miles, four days. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. Yeah, right. <laughs> See you guys at the brewery. Condensation coming down. We fought for this. We fought for this. Cheers. Cheers.